Hey everyone, my name is Leah and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing my September wrap up and at the time of filming this, it is almost the end of November. Yes, I know, this is so late. By the time I upload this, I'm afraid it might be December. I am so sorry. I don't really know why it took me this long to do my September wrap up, but this is where we are at. I did post a poll on Twitter and I asked people if they would still be interested in my September wrap up or if it was too late and people did say they would still be interested. So hopefully people will actually watch this <laughs> because these are books from quite a while ago. In September, I did have a pretty good reading month. I read a really decent number of books. However, I only read one book off of my physical TBR. So while to everyone else, I feel like it looks like I had a really good reading month. To me, it feels like I didn't because I'm really trying to get my physical TBR down and I read one book off my physical TBR. Also, it was a book that I had literally just acquired because it was the second book in the series and I had just read the first book and needed the second book. So I really didn't even make that much of a dent in my physical TBR because I had just bought that book. So yeah, not doing well on the physical TBR front. First, let's talk about some stats. I'm going to consult my iPad because I have all of the numbers written down here. In September, I read 27 books. 11 of those were audiobooks and 7 were graphic novels. Also, of those 27 books, 5 of them were rereads. Breaking down my star ratings, I didn't have any 1 or 2 star ratings. And then I had 6 3 star ratings, 1 3.5 star rating, which I think I rounded up to a 4 on Goodreads. 14 four star ratings, which was the overwhelming majority, one four and a half star rating, four five star ratings, and then one book that I didn't rate because it was a nonfiction and I don't tend to rate nonfiction. And then for the genre breakdown, I had one nonfiction, eight fantasy, and two of those fantasy are fantasy slash science fiction. Of those eight fantasy, Three were adult, three were YA, and two were middle grade. Had one historical fiction, and that was an adult historical fiction. I had five contemporary. Of those five, one was adult, three were YA, and there was one middle grade. Then there were four adult romance, and one of those adult romances was a historical romance. And then I had one literary fiction, at least I feel like that's how it would be classified. Maybe it would be classified as a contemporary. I'm not quite sure how to classify that book. So yeah, I had a pretty good reading month, but like I said, I read one singular book off my physical TBR. So I could have done a lot better on that. But now let's get into the books. The first book that I read was Like a Love Story by Abdi Nazemian. This is a YA contemporary slash historical fiction. For my stats, I categorized it as contemporary, but it could definitely also be considered historical fiction because it takes place in New York City in 1989 during the AIDS crisis. This book follows three teens. There's Reza who recently immigrated from Iran and he's very scared that someone will realize he's gay, especially because that is something that he has not really accepted for himself and he doesn't want anyone else to find out about him. And he's especially afraid about this because the only thing that he's seen like in the news about being gay is the coverage of the AIDS crisis. So he's just constantly afraid that he will get AIDS and that being gay means getting AIDS and that like touching another gay person will give him AIDS. Because he has not been educated about what AIDS means, the news is just like constantly scaring people about it. This book deals with the AIDS crisis a lot and that was very impactful to read about but also very sad at times so definitely know that about this book. It could be really really upsetting and because it was the AIDS crisis this book does deal with a lot of sickness and death. There's two more characters one of which is Judy who goes to school with Reza and she ends up falling for Reza and they actually start dating because he's still dealing with a lot of internalized homophobia and he's not 
letting himself be himself. Then there's Art, who is Judy's best friend, and he is gay. He's the only kid who's out as gay at school. He also has a mentor in Judy's uncle Stephen, who is also gay. Reza really struggles with trying to accept the truth about himself, and this just gets more difficult as he and Art start to grow closer. And, you know, Art is Judy's best friend, but then Judy is dating Reza, but Reza and Art are both gay. While this book has a love triangle, and I don't tend to like love triangles in books, in situations like this one, I think it's a lot more complex than love triangles usually are, and Reza is really struggling to figure himself out, so I did not mind that aspect of it. I think it's complex, and those complexities are explored in the book, and that's something that I really liked about it. I really enjoyed this book and I listened to it via audiobook and I liked the audio. I really liked this depiction of teens figuring themselves out, especially during this time period. It was really interesting to read a book that takes place during the AIDS crisis and also it was very sad, it made me cry a lot, but it made me think a lot about like what my life would have been like if I had grown up as a teenager during the time of this book and how I might have struggled more to accept myself and like what it would have been like to grow up as queer during this time and just how different things might have been. This book just made me do a lot of introspection. I will say another big trigger warning for this book in addition to the AIDS crisis is that there is a lot of internalized homophobia and I will put trigger warnings as always in the description box below. I gave this book five stars. I cried a lot. I really liked it. I also don't really know anyone else who has read this, so if you've read it, please let me know because I'd love to talk to someone about this book. Also, please read it and talk to me about it because I really want to talk to someone about this book. The next book that I read was a graphic novel and that was Bingo Love, which is by T. Franklin, and there's also some other authors and artists involved because the edition that I read was the Jackpot edition, which has some like additional stories at the end besides the main story. I buddy read this with my friend RC, which you will see me say several times in this video because RC and I buddy read I think four things together in September. We were supposed to buddy read five, but one of the things we didn't end up finishing in September, so we buddy read that in October. This is a sapphic graphic novel that follows a couple. There's two characters, Hazel and Mari, who were forced apart when they were younger and they reconnect years later after both of them have been married. The couple was cute and it definitely had me feeling emotional and very similar to Like a Love Story, I found myself doing a lot of introspection, thinking about my own experiences and kind of projecting some of my own experiences onto it. And I was just thinking a lot of what my life could have been like, especially if I grew up in the time period that they grew up in and like if I hadn't realized that I was queer and just lots and lots of things like that. RC and I talked about that a lot reading this book and I think because it made me feel so many things and feel that introspection I rated it a little higher. I ended up giving this a 3.5. I rounded it up to four stars on Goodreads because I did want a bit more from the writing and the development. Some of the development was a bit fast and also some of the dialogue was a little stilted. There were parts that didn't really feel like it was how people would talk, but the topics it dealt with and the emotions I felt and the introspection it made me feel really boosted it a lot for me. And then for the bonus stories, some of them were good, some of them were kind of eh. There was one that just, the art was not good. I just did not enjoy the art. I liked the story of that one, but I did not like the art, unfortunately. There was a preview for a volume two at the end that had both me and RC really intrigued and both of us really want to read volume two. No idea when it's going to come out though, and just the storyline looks like it's going to be completely different and it's kind of interesting, so I'm definitely going to pick that up when it comes out. The next thing that I read was The Falling in Love Montage by Ciara Smith. This is a sapphic female-female contemporary that takes place in Ireland and is by an Irish author. This deals with some heavy topics. The main character, Saoirse, doesn't really believe in love at first sight or happy endings, and part of that is because her mom has early onset dementia and is in a care home for that, and that is something that can run in the family, so Saoirse is afraid that that will happen to her, and because of that, she just 
just finds it really hard to believe in a lot of things. There are days where her mother doesn't recognize Saoirse or Saoirse's father and that's really difficult for her to deal with. Saoirse ends up meeting a girl named Ruby at a party and they kind of make this decision to do a like falling in love montage where they kind of follow some like typical rom-com like dates and they kind of have an end date on their romance that's going to be the end of the summer. So Saoirse's kind of breaking her own rules about love but because there's an end date she's like I'm allowed to do this. So it's not technically breaking her rules. This was cute at times and I really liked how the author ended the story. I can't really say anything without spoiling it but if you've read this let me know if you've liked the end results of the book because that's what I liked about it. However this book had a lot of lying and omitting the truth which is a thing that I've noticed a lot happens in YA for like conflict and I just really don't like it. Sometimes there's really good reasons for it and there is a reason for it in this book. It's because Saoirse is like afraid of the early onset dementia and she doesn't want to tell people about it but it just went a little bit too far and the lying really frustrated me so that was something that I didn't really like about the book. There was also one thing that happened that I wasn't a fan of and I don't want to spoil too much it was just like a very small scene and I won't say that much about it so it won't be like a really huge spoiler but if you don't want to know like anything if you don't want any spoilers at all you can skip ahead to I'll take down like this photo of the book when I am done talking about this thing that happened so once this photo disappears you can come back if you don't want any spoilers all right I'm going to go into the slight spoilers now so Saoirse's mom was a therapist and there's a scene where Saoirse goes into her mom's like office in their house and goes through her mother's client files and she literally picks out a client's file and reads it and this was such a huge invasion of privacy and it bothered me so so much like she literally reads a client's therapy file and I know teenage characters are not perfect and Saoirse is flawed but I just really this just made me so uncomfortable and she also ends up searching this person online and finding them online after and while she doesn't like contact them she still does that and that's such a huge invasion of privacy it bothered me so so much I just personally could not get over it. Unfortunately that really messed with my enjoyment of the rest of the book. There was a reason for her doing it but I feel like there just could have been another way for that reason to happen like something else could have happened to move the plot along in the way that this was supposed to and her father does like come in and see her doing it and says something like you shouldn't do that but like that was it. He just like says that and then it's kind of never mentioned again and that just wasn't enough of a like criticism of her behavior for me for what a huge breach of privacy it was. This book unfortunately just wasn't as much for me but I've seen a lot of people really really enjoy it. The next thing that I read was The Worst Best Man by Mia Sosa which is an adult romance that I really enjoyed. I am trying to get into adult romance but I am finding that I am very particular about adult romance. I need lots of yearning and romance and character work. That's what I need. So if you know romances with lots of good good yearning and like pining and great character work recommend me those but a couple of friends recommended this one to me so I decided to pick it up and I'm so glad that I did this is a hate to love romance between a wedding planner named Lena and a guy named Max who is the brother of her fiance from several years ago who left her at the altar so there's kind of some antagonistic feelings between them but then they end up seeing each other for the first time since that wedding disaster and they end up having to work together on a project that could further both of their careers. So they really have to 
tried to put aside their differences but really not put aside their differences and work together. There was a lot of banter and just like shenanigans between them that I found it just really fun to read about. I really liked both of their characters. I also really really liked Lena. The main character Lena is Afro-Brazilian and the book talks a lot about her culture and also about her family and I really liked that aspect of the book. I really enjoyed this romance and I ended up giving it four stars. The next thing that I read was Wonder Woman Rebirth and I read the like deluxe edition volume one. This is a bind up of a bunch of Wonder Woman comics. It's like year one is one of the storylines and then there's another storyline I can't remember at the moment. But I love Wonder Woman and I really want to get into some Wonder Woman comics and I read one last year maybe that I just didn't really enjoy. Like it was okay but it was just very clearly written and illustrated by men. I was not a fan. I really wanted to try another Wonder Woman comic and I think RC ended up recommending this one to me and I'm so glad he did because I really enjoyed it. And while this is written by a man and I think like all but one of the illustrators are men, it didn't feel as much written by men as the other Wonder Woman comic that I read so I was much more okay with it. It was just a lot less like egregiously written by men. This comic also makes it clear that Diana is sapphic. There is a scene where she's talking to her current love interest Steve Trevor and she mentions a previous relationship that she had with a woman. I'm not sure if this is the first time that Diana is explicitly mentioned to be sapphic in comics but I think it was like at least one of the first times. There are also two side characters that are very heavily implied to be sapphic and by heavily implied I mean I don't know how it would be possible for you to read this scene and think they are not sapphic. I wrote down the quote so I could read this to you. One of them literally says, I'm quite familiar with Sappho's surviving poetry and the other replies are you indeed and I was like sapphics this comic also deals a lot with the character Cheetah who's going to be in the Wonder Woman 1984 movie coming out this December and I'm even more excited for it now also the sapphic energy between her and Diana I need them to get together. Like, I'm sorry, Steve Trevor, but I'll put up some of the like images of the two of them from the comic because, oh my God, the sapphic energy. Diana and Barbara, please, please, please date. Give the sapphic everything she wants, please. Just look at these pictures and tell me there's no sapphic tension. I dare you. This is sapphic tension. This is sapphic tension. Like. It's everywhere. Anyways, I'm gay for Diana Prince. That's the summary of this Wonder Woman comic. I'm very gay for Diana Prince. Speaking of gay, the next book that I read was Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Mir, which, yes, was a reread. Yes, I read this in July. Yes, I reread it already. I reread it on audio, and I'm really glad I did. The audiobook was excellent. I won't say too much about this because I just read it, but I really enjoyed it. I would also say while the audio was really really good I don't know if I would recommend it if you're reading it for the first time just because Gideon the Ninth is a book that can be a little bit confusing and it has a large cast of characters with very long names and when I was reading it I found myself flipping back to the beginning a lot because there was like a cast of characters list so I found myself referring to that a lot and that's not something you can do with the audio but if you've read a lot of like dense adult fantasy on audio you'd probably be fine I just don't think I would have liked the book nearly as much if I had read it for the first time on audio. I picked up on a lot more during my second read and I'm really glad I did that so I could then later in the month pick up the sequel. The next thing that I read was Crier's War by Nina Varela. This was a reread via audio in preparation for the sequel coming out because the sequel came out in September. This is a sapphic enemies to lovers fantasy. I feel like people have talked about it a lot so I won't say too much about it especially because I've read it before. Also I really like some of the writing but I think the pacing is just a bit off for me at times. I just feel like I don't enjoy this as much as I've seen a lot of other people enjoy this so definitely pick this up and give it a chance. I'm just 
not as big of a fan of it. I then read Ironheart, which is the sequel to Cryer's War, and I also read this via audio. I actually read this for the Sapphic September readathon that I did. I read a lot of Sapphic books in September, as you will see, and that is because I was doing the Sapphic September readathon. This was the group book for Sapphic September. I enjoyed this and I really liked parts of it, but again, I just don't seem to like the series as a lot of other people do. I saw so many people raving about this book and I'm so glad other people absolutely adored it. It just wasn't as much for me. There were parts with the sapphic couple that had me like, yes, sapphics, but just not as much as other people apparently. The next thing that I read was The Weight of the Stars by Kay Ankrum and this is a YA contemporary that also has some like science fiction-y elements. I didn't categorize it as science fiction in my like genre summaries, but it does have science fiction elements to it. This is a female female contemporary that has a very nice slow burn romance that's kind of like hate to love romance. There's that, there's complicated friendships, there's talk of space travel, there's family dynamics, there's just so many aspects to this book. It's great. This was quick and easy to read, especially because the chapters are really short. I find short chapters get me to get through a book so much more quickly because I'm like, wow, I finished another chapter, I have time for another. And I just like kept reading the short chapters. It was fantastic. The characters are so dynamic and present and the writing is so atmospheric and beautiful and unique. I think the writing is like kind of that writing that isn't necessarily for everyone but it was so good. Everyone should give this book a try because it was such a beautiful book. The next book that I read was a graphic novel and that was The Avant Garde's Volume 1 by Carly Usden and this had illustrations by Noah Hayes. I had read Heavy Vinyl by Carly Usden and really really liked it so I looked them up and found that they had written another sapphic graphic novel and I was like okay, I will definitely read that. This is about a ragtag college basketball team and most, if not all, I'm not 100% sure of the team members are queer, which is fantastic. This is sapphic. There's a member of the team that uses they, them pronouns. It's just so delightfully queer. I loved all of the characters and their adventures so much. It was just adorable. I then read The Avant-Garde's Volume 2 because I loved Volume 1 so so much I picked up volume two right away. This was an excellent follow-up. I really enjoyed it and one thing I really loved about it was the first volume kind of focused a lot on one or two characters while this volume each issue followed a different character. I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a third volume but I don't know for sure and I don't know when that's supposed to come out. Please please I want volume three. The next thing that I read was Other Words for Home by Jasmine Warga, which I read via audiobook. This is a middle grade contemporary and it follows a girl named Jude who has just immigrated to the United States from Syria and she's moved with her mother because things in her hometown are becoming really volatile. Jude has to adjust to living in the U.S. and going to school in the U.S. and that is really difficult for her at times. Jude especially has difficulty adjusting because her father and brother are still in Syria and she has to deal with some people at school that aren't necessarily great to her but she also gains some new friends. This was a beautiful book and dealt with a lot of topics like immigration, discrimination, and family. I highly recommend this middle grade especially the audio. The audiobook was so good. The next thing that I read was The Henna Artist by Alka Joshi which I read because Chanel read it absolutely loved it and I was like okay I'll pick it up for you. This is adult historical fiction and it follows the main character Lakshmi as she becomes a henna artist. She lives in the city of Jaipur and she is a henna artist for a lot of wealthy and powerful women in the city so it deals a lot with the drama of these like high class families. There's a lot of dramatic things that happen and it also deals a lot with some things going on in Lakshmi's life and with her family. I listened to it on audio and I really liked the audio and I think it especially brings the atmosphere of 1950s India to life. The next thing that I read was Fearless by Shira Glassman, which is a romance novella, and I buddy read this with RC. This is a sapphic romance following a woman named Lana who is recently out as a lesbian. She goes to a band event for her daughter Robin, and there she ends up interacting with an orchestra director named Melanie. This was a cute and short read that had a really sweet 
romance. I do think at times the writing could have benefited from some more editing. This was a self-published work and at times that was a little bit clear. But like I said, this was really cute and it's only a couple of dollars for the ebook, so I definitely recommend you pick it up. The next thing that I read was The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman, which I read via audio because I wanted a kind of spookier read. This is a spooky supernatural middle grade that follows a boy named Nobody Owens, also called Bod, who grows up in a graveyard raised by ghosts. He ends up in this situation after his family was all killed by someone. There are ghosts, ghouls, witches, lots of spooky fun middle grade adventures. This was a dark and fun supernatural read and the audio book really added to the spooky atmosphere of it. The next thing that I read was Princess Princess Ever After by Katie O'Neill and this was a reread. This is an adorable sapphic graphic novel that's very short. It's under 100 pages so it's a very quick read. I really recommend that you pick this up. This has a romance between two princesses. It's really cute. They go on adventures. I highly recommend this. The next thing that I read was America Volume 1 The Life and Times of America Chavez by Gabby Rivera and this was another buddy read with RC. This follows the Marvel Young Avengers superhero America. I really really wanted to love this especially because America is a Latina lesbian and I was so excited to pick this up. Unfortunately it fell a little bit flat for me but there were six issues in it and the first issue was like fine. If I had to rate it I'd probably give it like three stars. Issues two to four were just not great. The writing wasn't great, the pacing wasn't great, the plot wasn't great. Issues 5 and 6 were better, but also felt completely out of place with the plot of the rest of the book, so I was very confused about that. However, issues 5 and 6 did have my girl, Kate Bishop, Hawkeye, so that was an improvement. I'm not sure yet if I will continue on with this series. I might give it a chance, because like I said, issues 5 and 6 were better, but I just didn't love this. Like I ended up giving it three stars because parts of it were decent. Unfortunately I just did not really like this. The next thing that I read was Pet by Akweke Amezi. This is a middle grade that follows the main character Jam who has grown up in the city of Lucille where everyone is taught that monsters don't really exist anymore. Then one day a creature comes to life from one of Jam's mother's paintings and this creature called Pet tells Jam that it is there to hunt a monster and this monster might be somehow connected to Jam's best friend Redemption. The writing of this is so fantastic and so unique and I found it to almost be whimsical but in a very like dark way. Is there a word for like darkly whimsical. It was so interesting. This can be very heavy at times and definitely has some trigger warnings so please look in the description below and do some research before picking it up if that's something you need. I loved 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 the cast of characters. All of the characters are black. The main character Jam is trans and she also is selectively verbal and uses sign language a lot. Jam's best friend Redemption also has three parents. They're in a poly relationship and one of them uses they them pronouns. This story is a lot about evil and the danger of people kind of turning a blind eye and thinking everything is all right when it might not be and just kind of getting too comfortable in a seeming utopia. The next thing that I read was Knit One Girl 2 by Shira Glassman, another buddy read with RC and this was by the same author as Fearless. This was another self-published novella that's available as an ebook. This is a sapphic romance between a yarn dyer and a painter who are both Jewish. This was cute at times and had some parts I enjoyed. I feel like I was enjoying the first half a lot more but it ended up falling a little flat for me and I had a few more problems with it than I had with Fearless. The writing kind of struggled at times and there was this one scene where the writing just really struggled. Or see if you're watching this you know exactly which scene I'm talking about but I don't really know how to describe it. It just the writing just struggled. I do think some people would enjoy this and both of the characters talked about like fan art and fan fiction so that was a cool aspect of it but unfortunately I just didn't really love it and I wanted more from it. 
The next thing that I read was another graphic novel, and that was Space Battle Lunchtime Volume 1, which I read on NetGalley. It was available on NetGalley, and I'm so glad it was because I had never heard of it before, and I wouldn't have ever heard of it if I hadn't seen it on NetGalley and decided to read it. This graphic novel follows a baker from Earth named Peony, and she gets suddenly recruited to be a part of this universe-wide cooking competition called Space Battle Lunchtime. There's cooking shenanigans, there's competition, there's aliens, there's adventure. It's so, so fun. I also loved how the writer really depicted all of like the crew that work on the show, one of the main side characters was a crew member and there was also just like background scenes that showed the crew members there was one scene where in the background they showed like two little alien light techs just like doing their job and I was like look at those light techs go there was also what I think is the beginnings of a sapphic romance I'm like 99% sure that it's a sapphic romance but the graphic novel ended and I need volume two my library doesn't have it I want to read volume two so so badly. I think there's three volumes out. I'm not sure how many they're supposed to be. I want to read all of them. It was so fun. The next thing that I read was Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb, which was a reread. I read this for the first time last year, but I want to read the next books in the series, and I kind of felt like I wanted to reread first. I did this reread via audio and really enjoyed it. This is book one in the Farseer trilogy, and this follows the main character Fitz, who is the illegitimate son of one of the princes of the kingdom. Fitz has the ability to connect to the minds of animals. This is something that's called like the wit, but a lot of people think that this is something that could drive people mad. When he's older, Fitz starts training to be the apprentice of the king's assassin, and that's a big part of the plot of this book. I've seen a lot of people say that this book is too slow, so the pacing is an issue for a lot of people. I didn't really find it that slow. Like, I was fine with the pacing. But what was really strong for me was the character work. I think because I was so interested in Fitz as a character, I didn't really care about the parts of the book that were a little slower. The pace does pick up a little bit more at the end and the last part I think was especially interesting and I also cried. <laughs> I do cry quite easily at books though. I'm just really excited to continue on with the series. The next thing that I read was On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Wong. This was the September pick for the Bibliophiles book club that I am a co-host of so I will link our live show for that in the description box and probably also put it in a card up above. Since this was a bibliophiles pick, I won't talk about it that much, but this is a story that is told in the form of a letter from a son to his mother who doesn't know how to read. So that's very interesting. This was the book that I wasn't sure what to classify it as, but I think it's can be considered literary fiction. That's what I'm going to call it for now. The writing of this was absolutely beautiful. Ocean Vuong is a poet and while this book isn't told in verse, I could absolutely see that Ocean Vuong is a poet and I'm really looking forward to reading more of his work in the future. The pacing was a little bit off for me at times, but just the writing was amazing. The next thing that I read was The Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite, which was so good. This is a female-female historical romance. I think this is the first historical romance I've ever read. If you know of other sapphic historical romances, please recommend them to me because this was excellent. This had romance, women navigating the male-dominated field of astronomy. So, so good. These sapphics just made me so soft. I love them so much. Catherine, Lucy, love them so much. I love their characters. I love their relationship. I just love this book so, so, so much. I can't wait to read Olivia Waite's other sapphic romance. I think she has like one other sapphic historical romance. Please read about these amazing historical sapphics. The next thing that I read was Harrow the Ninth by Tamsin Mir. Yes, this is the one book off my physical TBR that I read this month. Yes, I bought it in September because I bought it right after I read Gideon and my library didn't have it and I needed to read it immediately because if you've read Gideon, you know the second that book ends, you need book two. And thankfully I read it when book two had just come out. So I only had to wait a little bit for me to finally buy the book and then for it to arrive and then I read it 
I buddy read this with my friend Iza. We buddy read Gideon together and then we buddy read this together. And us buddy reading this basically just consisted of us like screaming at each other over text about what the heck was going on. I spent over half of this book just confused but like in a good way and I was fine with it and it ended up being completely worth it just if you're reading this and you're confused trust Tamsin just just trust that Tamsin will get you there I'm sorry if my camera angle just slightly changed my iPad completely died on me and my notes for filming are on my iPad so I had to go plug that in really quick but this book made me feel like the whole realm of human emotion <laughs> confusion sadness hilarity the memes the memes in this book Tim's and Mir her writing style is just wild like the way she incorporates memes into an adult necromancer science fiction fantasy it's wild this made me want to reread this knowing what you know at the end and it also made me want to reread Gideon again I'm definitely going to be rereading both of those books sometime soon also Tams and Mir really gave us that ending that ending and we are not getting book three until 2022 I need book three right this moment I need book three in my hands right now and I don't have it and I won't have it for like two years anyways go read Gideon and Hair of the Ninth they're so good the next thing that I read was One to Watch by Kate Stamen London this is an adult contemporary that I think can also be classified as a romance and it follows the main character B who is a plus size fashion blogger and she ends up getting asked to be this season star of Main Squeeze which is a reality show that kind of resembles The Bachelorette. This had a lot of twists and turns and just like reality TV show drama that was fun to read about and especially fun to read via audio. I listened to the audiobook of this which was good. I really liked B as a character and the journey she goes through and while this does have some romance aspects I think the strongest part of the book is B as a character and just the journey that she herself goes on. There was also a side ace character which was really nice to see. This does does have really really big trigger warnings for fat phobia some people are horrifically rude to be and there's also a lot of internet comments the book shows the comments that people make on the internet after B is cast for the show and some of them are truly truly horrific I have seen several people really not like this book and have a very hard time with this book because it is so triggering so I would say definitely look at trigger warnings and definitely look at some reviews from plus sized reviewers because some really had some problems with how triggering this book was so yeah just be aware of all of that before picking this up and while I really really did enjoy the book it's not necessarily a book that is a just happy book with a plus size protagonist. The next thing that I read was Sister Outsider Essays and Speeches by Audre Lorde and this is a non-fiction book with a collection of essays and speeches that Audre Lorde did between 1976 and 1984. These speeches are about intersectional feminism, racism, homophobia, and a lot of other topics. There was one in particular that dealt a lot with a specific instance of U.S. imperialism that I found very educational to read and I listened to the audiobook of this and really liked the audio. I thought this was a very good collection of essays and speeches and I definitely want to pick some more stuff by Audre Lorde up in the future. Then the last thing that I read this month was The Gilded Wolves by Roshani Chakshi and this is a YA fantasy. This was another reread that I did via audio because I want to read the sequel, The Silver Serpents. I have not read it yet. I will hopefully read it sometime soon. I don't know if it'll end up happening this year. This is a YA fantasy following a great cast of characters that includes a character named Severon, 
I am almost definitely pronouncing his name wrong because it's French. He is kind of a treasure hunter and his quest to get back his true inheritance leads him to search for an object called a Horus Eye and he and his friends end up having to work together to try to find this. This is set in 1880s Paris and there's a really fun and diverse cast of characters. This also deals with a lot of topics within the historical setting. It deals with colonialism, colorism, ableism, anti-semitism, um, lots of topics like that. I enjoy this reread and I'm looking forward to finally picking up the second book at some point. But yeah, those are the 27 books that I read in the month of September. If you have made it this far, thank you so much for watching a September wrap up in late November, early December, whenever I get around to posting this. I'm a little bit of a disaster right now. But let me know if you read any of these. Let me know what your favorite book that you read in September was. If I had to pick one favorite, it would be Hero the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. If you've made it this far in the video, let's say leave me a skull emoji for Hero the Ninth since it was my favorite read of the month because necromancers. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you later. In December, December, it's about to be December. This is a sapphic, sa sapphic, sapphic, kind of some antagonist, and I found really fun to enjoy about, fun to enjoy about, that's not a sentence. I'm pretty sure this was supposed to be a,